Um, hope you're all awake. I had plenty of coffee, I have. I prepared with beer and curry last night. I can't advise it. So, why am I here? Well, with agile development seeing software released at a fast and furious rate, how can you be sure each release is safe? Here we're going to see how some of, well, one of Europe's largest online retailers deploy web applications frequently and quickly with security built in. So this is a, a very important talk for any security professional that needs to protect their business in the best possible way from application risks. I want to talk about an efficient, effective, and real way to develop and deploy secure software. I want you to understand how to really address the issue of application security um, in an agile process, automatically, accurately, and therefore efficiently and simply. So what I'm going to do is, is set the scene with some, um, some stories from the press and then just have a brief overview of, uh, of Agile and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty of, um, of secure Agile. So who am I? Um, I'm UK manager for Quochim. Uh, we're at Stand L51. Uh, I've got 15 years in application assurance and uh, well, performance and, and security more recently. I'm a certified penetration tester, ISEB practitioner, uh, performance engineer, and I find myself speaking at these events more lately. Uh, just really quickly, who are Quochim? We're a software provider uh, doing uh, application security and application performance. The founders have uh, over 15 years experience in uh, information and application security. Uh, it, and that's really what we've built all of our uh, that's what we build our products on. So, application security, what's it doing in the business strategy theater? Well, it's a technical issue, surely. Well, actually, no, it, it's, it's both. It has a serious impact on business. Um, what I'm going to do is just talk through, uh, well, this is an example of some application security specific uh, exploits that have happened in the real world. And uh, I'm not, not going to spend too much time on here. I just want to talk about uh, an example or two. If we look at, for example, Sony, they lost somewhere between 1.5 billion and 170 million due to application security tax. City was particularly interesting. That was um, due to a parameter tampering issue. In fact, if you have your URL um, and you are on the credit card portal, some bright spark, or actually, you didn't need to be too bright to find this out. If you change the account number in the URL, you can see somebody else's credit card details, including the CCV number. So, okay, that, that was 360,000 credit cards. May or may not have been 2.7 million. That was what was reported. I would suspect it may be significantly more. And there's a, one of the favorites of mine. This was a while ago. This was the, uh, just before the, um, the elections. That, where Mr. Bean is, should have been a picture of Mr. David Cameron. However, the hacker, Lul, uh, Lul V, uh, you can't really see in the, uh, in the image there, went in and changed the, um, the, th the uh, it was a, con a content management system, used SQL injection to change the images and the text. And that was propagated across all of the constituencies. It was quickly taken down, but I found some screenshots. Um, and then, actually, Yahoo with their SQL injection just um, the middle of last year. So SQL injection has been around for a long, long time, uh, and, and it's been known about for a long, long time, at least 15 years. How, how did they make this mistake? Well, the thing is, if the quality gates are in place, but things, things are not being checked for every release, then what you can find is uh, these, these security bugs creep in. Like, it's like a regression in the software. So application security then. Let's just take a look at what it is. We, we have a secure network, we have secure servers, but yet the application remains vulnerable. Why is the application there? Well, it's there to present data. It's there to make it useful for its users. So they may be your staff, your patients, your customers, your soldiers, whatever it might be. So it's got to be high performance, highly functional, and very useful. Now, the thing is, if that's designed into the application and security isn't considered in the application, then Malicious users have just as much ability to use the application and then can use it 
either to do some injection and data extraction or via some kind of cross-site attack, attack other users via your application. So why do applications remain vulnerable? Um, I mean, they are, if we look at the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, they say that 92% of vulnerabilities are in applications, not in networks. Um, there's another percentage that OWASP came up with, that 90% of uh, the security budget is spent um, outside of application security. So we need to readdress the balance. 75% of attacks, according to Gartner, are arranged at the application layer, and 85% of application vulnerabilities are found at source code level. So it means we have a lot of uh, vulnerable applications despite this one billion annual spend and 40% growth in the market. Oh dear, we have a severe problem. So what do we do about Agile? If you're on a fast track to anything, you're probably using agile development or some form of it. There's no set form of, of uh, an agile methodology. That there are different flavors of it. Um, I don't want to talk about agile per se, but I just want to get a grounding. So agile is, um, as opposed to waterfall, is um, uh, a method of developing software that favors face-to-face -face communication over formal documentation. Waterfall is, is uh, much more formal uh, method of creating software, and, and you can imagine it like a waterfall, uh, step by step, going through the stages of development until you get to release. So the organization, um, maybe the, the board says, okay, we, we, we must become agile. Agile equals profit. There was some, uh, some uh, an economist report that said um, uh, organizational agility make, gives you more, uh, more profit. And in fact, some MIT research says agile firms grow 30% faster and, and uh, generate 30% more profit. So I'm talking about organizational agility as, per, uh, as, a, as opposed to agile development. But really, if, if we look at what we're doing with agile development, how do we, well, how do we really embed security? Well, in fact, done the right way, agile mitigates risk. We have a progress, a visible progress in the right direction. So for every iteration that, that we do, we're going to see, well, how, how is the application looking? And then we can go back through this continuous integration and planning with our to-do list and then create uh, the, the next iteration, which should be continuing further in the right direction. So the developers are able then to become more responsive. So, uh, and for, for secure applications, we need security by design, and, and that's how we can embed security in using an agile process. As opposed to uh, waterfall methodology, where, where it's more likely that you'll f have discovery of these vulnerabilities on the eve of delivery, which is really no longer an option. So if we find issues early, we can then test and test and test to maturity these application security vulnerabilities. So why, why aren't we, why isn't everybody developing secure applications? Apparently they're not because we see in the press these, uh, these, uh, these attacks and these exploits. Well, the issue is that scanning and static code review don't deliver. There's, there's a lot of noise, a lot of false positives, a lot of false negatives. And it means that you need to go through and have a verification process for every report that you're going to get from, from this kind of technology. And, and also to try and correlate the results is, uh, I, I have personal experience of this, is, is very difficult. It's, n it's not only very time consuming, but it's very skills hungry. There's, there's not a lot of people with the ability to know what the application is doing and the ability to understand the exploit to, to work out where the problem is in the code. You have third party issues, you don't necessarily have the code in the first place, so static analysis can't work in that situation. Um, and really, the results are very code-centric, not application-centric. So if, you, if you're told about a, uh, I don't know, a SQL injection vulnerability in, uh, in this particular function in the code, who's to know uh, where, it really, where it manifests itself on the interface? Um, and also, that code might be redundant code. So penetration testing, 
that's very thorough. A, a proper security analysis of the application is the way to go. It's, it's, the, it's the way to find most vulnerabilities. But how could it possibly fit with Agile? Well, this is the problem because it's time consuming again, it, it's, it's expensive, it's not really scalable. You couldn't do that for every iteration of your, um, of your development. So, what can we do? Well, what we need is, uh, for, for the results, for, for the response from the application security review, they have to be incredibly accurate and focus on real vulnerabilities and only those vulnerabilities. So we need to get rid of false positives. It has to be very clear. So not only to present a problem, but the solution, the root cause analysis. Where is this, uh, this, this exploit? How does it manifest itself? Well, where does it come from in the code? So we need to be able to say, well, hey, look, here's a problem, but here's, how to, here's where it is in, um, uh, in the application itself, in the code itself. And it needs to be simple because there's not enough security, and let alone not enough application security expertise in the world to deal with all these software projects. So it needs to be a conjoined effort between QA, between security, and between development in order to create a true uh, piece of secure software. So therefore, we need a simple solution. So let's take a look at um, agile development. I struggled to find a diagram for agile, so I drew one myself. Um, if we, if we take a look at what's going on here, <clears throat> you have the customer on the left, this is King, um, and they, they have a project, they have some requirements. So that turns into a prioritized to-do list. So for each iteration of development, we work on the things that give us the most value. And we just, we go through this process, we go through the, the, um, the iteration, I'm gonna reveal that, that white square in a moment. Um, and then we come back, the, 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 it might be a sprint or a, a release. We have a presentation to all of the stakeholders, and then we, we analyze that, we do a project review, we then do the planning of the next iteration, and then get our next prioritized to-do list. So we keep going through here, all the to-do things are done, done. That's not a mistake, that's the whole point of our drill. You say what you're gonna do, you stand up, you say what you're gonna do, and you do it. But if you look at actually what's going on inside Agile, it's really bite-sized waterfall chunks, small, um, manageable chunks of software development. 